everybody. Welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Okay, let's talk about who should make the first move. Okay, ladies, you should not make the first move. The men are the hunters and they should make the first move. So allow the men to be the hunters. Okay, now um, before we dig into this message today, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all of the new subscribers. Welcome to all of the new viewers. And welcome to those of you who have been with me from the beginning. I appreciate you so very much. And those of you who are new to the channel, I will answer your relationship questions. So at the end of this video, I will show you a link where you can send in your questions, okay? Now, for those of you who are interested in these caps, they are now available in my online store. So in the description at the bottom, you will see a link, online store, just click on it, and there you are, okay? Now, let's dig into this message. Allow the man to be the hunter and not you. You see, um, I get a lot of letters from ladies who um, want to know how to approach a man. And my advice to you is don't. Don't approach men. Remember, ladies, you are queens. You are the prize. You understand? There's no reason for you to approach a man when a man is going to be looking for you. You understand? All you need to be is your beautiful self. And a man will approach you. You understand? Even at my age, men approach me every day. You understand? It's your vibration that brings them in. More than you don't have to go out here showing your body off and, you know, acting like you're some kind of sex goddess and all this to attract a man. No, you don't have to do that. Men are naturally attracted to women. It's a natural occurrence. Women, but don't be desperate to get a man. Many of us. You know, we we are lonely. Lonely. So we run out, want to run out and find a man. Or we spot a man and he, he looks like he's a good man from the outside. And we want to ask him out on a date, you know, or whatever. Ladies, that's a bad idea. Don't, don't do that. Don't ask men out. I don't care. How much of a crush that you have on a man? Never ask him out. Now, you can see him and, you know, you can smile. But then just a quick smile and go about your business. If a man is interested in you, he will approach you. He will come to you. You understand? But you... You need to be in a higher vibration. And that's why I'm telling you, ladies, to work on yourself. Now, here, here is the procedure how to get the man that you want. I'm going to tell you again. It's inside of you. All you got to do is ask. And that to ask is not begging. You ask the divine for what you want. And then you believe. That divine is going to deliver what you asked for. But then you got to go in and work on yourself. Because the divine is going to match your vibration. So the man that's going to come is going to match you. So if you are in a low vibration, which means, you know, you're, you're always complaining about something. Something's always wrong. You're downing yourself. 
you don't feel like you look beautiful, you don't feel like you're smart and all this, the divine is going to send you a mate that matches that. That's your vibration. You understand? That's what you're getting. You cannot be in a low vibration and expect to have a high vibrational male. It doesn't work like that. If you want somebody who is kind and honest, trustworthy and all of that, you got to be that. You have to be that. So that's why I'm telling you to go inside yourself and work on yourself. And if when you're asked for something, know that it's going to come. Don't look for it to come. Don't do that. Because when you look for it, that tells the divine you don't believe it's coming. And you're actually pushing it further away from you. But when you believe that what you've asked for is going to be given to you, you work on yourself. So when it comes, it's at the highest vibration possible. Because you want to build yourself up to be a high vibrational being. This is very important. You see, uh, low vibrations are when people come and mistreat you, you know, abuse you, whether emotionally or physically, you know, they're always downing you and making you feel bad and fighting you and stealing from you. That's low vibrational energy. You don't want that into your life at all. But, if that's in your life now, then you know you need to work on yourself. That's the only way you're going to get rid of it. It's inside of you. The power to all of this is inside of you. And you got to go inside yourself and work on that. You see? And once you've done that and you're in the healing process, better mates will approach you you'll see the difference they will approach you now I need for you to understand that men are the hunters and you are the one that are the ones that they hunt for It's not to you to take the role of the hunter. Don't do it. I know, I remember some, um, I was reading some literature somewhere where they were encouraging women, don't wait for men, you go out. If you see somebody that you want, you know, you ask them out. That's a mistake. Don't ask men out. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Because... Men will take advantage of that. It makes you look desperate when you do that. You see, you want to be looked at as the prize. You want the man to approach you correctly and then you choose who you want. But you need to raise your vibrations to be in the position to do that. You understand? But if you're in a low vibration, then you're in that mindset that you need to settle. You, you, you understand? This is the best you can get. So you settle. That's low vibration. You want to be in a higher vibration where you can pick and choose who you feel would be the best mate for you. You understand? And, and don't feel like... Uh, because you're an older woman, that this won't work for you. It'll work at any age. Any age. But you got to love yourself. You understand? That's what's the most important thing is loving yourself. And not allowing anybody to disrespect you. But you have to build yourself up to that. You have to build yourself. And it's work. It's work. But people, ladies, 
just because you see somebody nice, you know, you look over, he's nice, and, you know, he, maybe he doesn't have a wife right now or whatever, and some way you want to meet him or you want to approach him. Don't do it. Don't do it. Men take advantage when you do that. Don't do it. The man needs to approach you. Now, if he doesn't approach you, there are a number of reasons. He could be involved with somebody else that you don't see or know about. If he's uh, divorced or unmarried, it could be a lot of red flags in that. You understand? And uh, if he's never been married, and if he is an older person, I think that's a that could be a big red flag. Understand? Because if you've been married, he doesn't have life experience in being married. Okay, it's a lot of things you need to consider when choosing a mate. And ladies, ladies, you know, just like men choose who they want, you have the power to choose who you want to. It's not just, just because the man is the hunter doesn't mean that you don't have any power. You're not a victim. You're, you're not a victim. You're a prize. And you need to carry yourself like you know who you are. You understand? And this impresses men. When you are confident and you know and you love yourself. Okay. So let's look at some of these letters and let's see what we have here. Okay. Okay, here we go. I am a 71-year-old woman who is contemplating crossing that line with my business partner who is 52 years old. He is a truck driver and on the road the majority of the time. As a retired administrator, I embarked on a business partnership as his freight dispatcher and now manage much more of his life. Although I welcome the professional challenge, my quandary is whether to cross the line, considering that I've been celibate for 21 years. Although I've known him for over 15 years, we most recently became business partners earlier this year, when he offered to take me under his wing and mentor me in the logistics industry. That's a good thing. He is a man of knowledge, wisdom, and integrity and has the most honorable intentions for me as his business partner. He makes me laugh. Throughout my celibacy, I learned to embrace and respect the art of being alone over being lonely. Good for you. All I was looking for was the opportunity to develop and grow my freight dispatch business. I was not looking to become sexually involved with anyone, certainly not at this point in my life. This is a good thing because you don't really want to mix business with pleasure. That That's not a good thing. The last thing I would want to do is compromise our business partnership because it's definitely working and has much potential to growth. However, I am very perceptive of his respectable subtleties and have a clear understanding of that vibe, even though he hasn't and probably won't boldly hit on me. I would like to believe that he would be receptive to some genuine dialogue, but I have to admit that I am scared. I wouldn't know where to begin. If I were horny and desperate, I could understand. Or maybe this is just the result of my 21 years of celibacy. I am a confident woman, and I seriously cannot recall when I've been so timid about anything. Okay, here we go. Number one. It looks like you're already... 
you already have a friendship with this man. If you've known him over 15 years, if you've known him over 15 years and now you're in a business partnership, just be in that and be in a friendship. But don't make a romantic move toward him ever. Ever. Keep it friendly. Keep it business. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to keep it business. Now, he's like 20 years younger than you. <laughs> Understand? That could be another reason why he's keeping it business. He could be, he could have his eye on somebody else. You understand? He's not looking at you in a romantic way. And and for you, what is it that you are wanting? You know, are you looking for sex? Because, I mean, you stated it that you, you've been celibate. He's teaching you the business. And it seems like your business is working for both of you. Don't cross the line. Don't mess it up. And if you... If you approach him in a romantic way, you have the potential of destroying your business. If he's not approaching you, don't approach him. And even if he does, I think you should think about it. I think you should set your sights on somebody else. If, Especially if you are looking for sex. You understand? But... Especially if you are wanting sex. And for you to mention about you being celibate makes me think that that may be on your mind. If you cross the line, sex is what you're going to get. Somebody's going to get hurt and your business is going to suffer from it. Never mix business with pleasure. Understand? And when he, I'm telling you, this is a big age difference right here. Almost 20 years. He is interested in your business growing. And I think that's where your mind should be too. On the business. You see? Now, um, this, this man, like I said, he may have outside interests that you don't even know about. Understand? He may not even be looking at you like that. If he hasn't made a move on you, he probably is not. Now, if you're giving out these vibes that you like him, I think you need to stop it. Going around, you know how you can give out little vibes. I mean, you know, and he can pick them up. You need to cut that off. I think you're going down the wrong path. If your business has the potential of growing and being all that you want it to be, you should stay focused on your business and forget about him romantically. This could potentially destroy what you're trying to build. This is what I'm telling you. And I don't care even if he was your age. You don't want to mix your business with pleasure. It's a bad idea. This is the same reason you don't want to date somebody on the job. It's the same thing. This is where you make your money. Don't mix it. It's, it will be a horrible mistake. So my advice to you. Is to keep it business and don't cross this line ever okay so let's let's look into another letter okay here we go I'm 35 I've dated a handsome man who's 38 15 years ago but I was obviously not ready for a relationship because I was scared to be hurt again and I did not have many experiences in relationships but then i wrote him a letter explaining that we should not see each other anymore he was always a gentleman i didn't intend to waste his time or hurt his feelings 
A few days ago, I thought about him, and I, des and I decided to send him a Facebook message. I've asked him how things go, and I offered the opportunity that we could talk to each other again if he wants to. Uh, my question, why'd you do that? Why, why, you broke it off because you were scared of getting hurt. And now you're thinking that maybe you made a mistake about cutting him off before. Okay, my question is, how do I know for sure if he holds a grudge against me? I heard from another woman that he dated after me that he told her that I have broken his heart and that he is not able to love another woman because of this situation. I don't know if he is the type of man that falls in love fast or if he really likes me for me. His mother died when he was a child and he really misses her, which I can understand. But I knew back then and know that I can't and don't want to be a grown man's mother. No woman could ever take her place and should not try to. Because of this sensitive topic, I am wondering how I could explain this to him without being ruthless if he decided to answer me. Let's see what we have here. All right, let's try to understand what's going on. Okay, you dated this man 15 years ago. And you broke it off. Okay. I doubt it if this man is holding a grudge from 15 years ago. And if this man shared with uh, a woman that he was dating. That he was broken hearted over you. I would take that with a grain of salt. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that he was in love with you. It doesn't mean anything. You understand? So, I don't know if the man is going to contact you again or not. But what I'm telling you, you shouldn't have, you should not have contacted him. What is it that you want from him? Are you wanting to start up the relationship again? What? You're not afraid of being hurt anymore? Uh, or what? When you contact men, it makes you look desperate, number one. And he's probably just moved on from you. And with him moving on from you could be a good thing. You understand? You just remember that you were the one that broke it off with him. And there must have been a real reason why you broke it off in the first place. But now over time, see, over time we have a way of forgetting why we broke up. And then we think about maybe the happy times we had with the person or the feelings that we had and forget the real reason that we broke up. But you need to remember that reason. Why? And you mentioned in a letter something about uh, his mother. Is he a mother's boy? Is that the reason why he broke up? But in any regard, don't contact a man. Ever. Don't do it. You're asking for trouble when you do that. Now here you are waiting to see if he's going to respond to you. Ladies, why would you put yourself in a position like that? That you got to be sitting by the phone and waiting whether he contacts you. And when and if he contacts you, he's going to play you like a little puppet. Because you don't put yourself out there like that. It's not a good idea for you to contact these men. Stop doing it, ladies. It's not a good thing. I don't know who put that message out there for women to do this. But you're setting yourself up for disaster. You understand? Whatever reason that you walked away from this man 15 years ago now. You know, people change. He could have changed in 15 years. 
and uh, whatever. But if he contacts you, I would keep it on a friendly note. Don't make him feel like you're contacting him to date him. Don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, you know, you can contact him like a friend and just try to recover yourself, your own dignity for, from that mishap of, of contacting him. You understand? It's not a good situation. Ladies, and I want you to understand this. You are worth more than that. See, ladies, you got to understand what your value is. You are queens. And you should be respected and treated like that. Which means that you don't need to contact men. Men should be groveling to get your attention. But you have to be that person. You have to raise your vibration. You have to be confident and love yourself and show that. And men will come to you. You understand? But yeah, I think you made a mistake by contacting him and even a mistake waiting for him to contact you back. I think you need to forget that and start loving yourself more. Okay? I hope that advice helps you from that. But that was the reason why you cut it off in the first place. And uh, there are plenty of men out here that I'm sure would love to, to uh, date you. But I say work on yourself. That's what I say. Because once you do that, you'll see the folly in Chasing a man. And when you contact them, that's what you're doing. You're chasing a man. Don't do it. Don't do it. The men are programmed to chase you. They're programmed to do that. But see, in today's society, it's too many women out here who got the word that they can chase the men. And so the men just lay back and wait for you to cater to them. No. Let's flip it around, ladies. They're supposed to cater to you. Okay? Know your value. Know your value and show it. In everything you do, let your light shine and men will respond. Okay? All right. I hope you understand that message and I hope it helps. Okay. We got another letter here and... uh. Let's, let's dig into this one. I am currently on my self-love, self-healing journey. And I have finally established peace within myself, which feels absolutely wonderful. I know it does. I have a friend who recently moved to another state, away from her family and friends, to be with a man who is, according to her, verbally and physically abusive, doesn't work, doesn't contribute to the household, and communicates with other women while he's currently living with her. Well, <laughs> look like this is what she chose. I warned her in the beginning that he was a walking red flag when they first met his mental health issues. But she chose to stick with him, and now she is regretting that decision. She has been complaining to me for the last year and a half about the things he's doing, as well as his job, the landlord, his mother, and anything else that's heavy and low vibrational. After she's finished ranting about all of the things that are wrong in her life, she makes excuses to quickly get off the phone. She'll even hang up without warning and say that her phone died. Yet she never calls back until she's ready to vent again. Yeah, I'm telling you, I know people like this. They just, 
They just want to rent. You understand? These people don't care about your advice and your opinions or anything like that. They just want to to vent. To vent. So they'll call up people they think that will listen to that toxicity. It doesn't make them feel any better, but they letting it out. You understand? Okay, let's see what else you say. We've both shared details with each other regarding our personal lives, but I don't reach out to her with a heavy load. I often go within to find ways to deal with it myself. Yeah, because now you know how to deal with these things, but apparently your friend doesn't and probably is not interested in knowing. Okay? I like her as a person, but I am no longer interested in being anyone's personal therapist, especially those who never take my advice. I'm just now learning how to deal with my own problems, and I just don't have the desire to deal with anyone else's at this time. Should I continue to try to help her, or should I love her from a distance? My advice is to love her from a distance. Okay? I'm telling you, people like this are not interested in any of your advice or your opinions. Now, I'm going to tell you, the people that I know that, that I don't get that many calls now, but there was a time when I used to get these calls uh, and these people are pessimists. Everything is wrong. They're always looking on the wrong side of life. And they want to talk. They want to call, call you and tell you all the problems they are going through. Well, this is what I used to do. Hello? And they go off. They'll, they'll start telling. After a while, I'll lay the phone down because I do not want to hear all that. I'll lay the phone down and I'll go away from, walk off from the phone and go about my day and do whatever I need to do. Whatever. Come back 30 minutes later. They still ranting and raving on the phone. They don't even realize that I walked away. You understand? So I'll come back and I'll say, yeah, you know, that's too bad. Wow. Ooh, yeah. And I'll put the phone down, walk away again. Go on and do whatever I need to do in the house, outside, or whatever. Come back. And if they're still on there, sometimes they'll be on there. Yeah, did you hear that? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, you know, that's too bad. Well, you know what? I got to go and I'll talk to you next time. Bam. You understand? Do not sit up there and listen to all of that. Because that energy is coming in your direction. And you don't want that. You don't want that. You're healing from all that. But these people are not interested at this point in their life about healing. They just want to vent. Unload. And they think that that makes them feel better. But it really doesn't it just makes room for more toxicity you understand love her from afar and even the people that used to call me often with this negativity i'm raising my vibration and they don't cause me as much now if ever you understand but this was doing when i was healing they used to call me with this. Understand? But I, I reject toxicity. I don't want to hear it. You see? And you don't want to hear it either. So, you know, you love her from afar. And whenever she calls, if she calls, you know, you want to you wanna say hello. But I wouldn't sit there and listen to all that. I, I wouldn't do it. I tell you, I, I laid the phone down many times. Come back 30 minutes later and they were still going. And I'm going to tell you something. One of the people that used to call me told me flat out. Listen, I don't want to hear your opinions. This is not the reason I'm calling you. You know, I'm just trying to tell you things that are, is going on in my life. Then I realized that they just wanted to vent. Not interested in healing. Not interested in you trying to help them? Mm -mm. Number one, if you listen to your friend, she probably never asked you for your advice. She probably never asked you. 
I know the people that used to call me never asked. But you want to help. You think that that's the reason that they're calling you for your opinion. But that's not it. That's not it. They're just trying to unload it, thinking that that's going to make them feel better. But it doesn't. It makes you feel worse because they've unloaded all of their toxicity on you. Don't let that happen. Walk away from it. Okay? Now, that's my advice. Love your friend, but love her from afar. Do not take all of these calls, these toxic calls. You know, take them once in a while. Maybe after a while, she'll get the message that you don't want to hear it. And she'll find somebody else to unload on. Okay? So, I hope that that helps. And uh, the message today was um, allow the man to be the hunter, not you. Don't you be out here hunting for anything. Whatever you desire in your life, go inside yourself and ask. Don't beg, but ask the divine for what you desire. And believe, believe that it will be delivered. And if you believe that it's going to be delivered unto you, then you're not going out here looking for it, looking for it to happen. You just go on about your life and it will appear out of nowhere when you least expect it. That's when it'll come. But as long as you're looking for it, you're actually going against the tide and pushing it away from you. But if you believe it's coming, you know it's coming. You go on about your life, and and when I say going about your life, bettering yourself, raising your vibration. You understand? Loving yourself. You're doing all these things so that when he comes, he's at a high vibration to meet your high vibration. And that's the combination to a happier life. You understand? If you're in a low vibration and you ask for divine to send you a high vibrational mate, it's not going to happen because you are in a low vibration. And the divine is going to answer you, but you're going to get a low vibrational being. You follow me? You have to be what you desire. And that's why I always tell you women to raise your vibration. To be better. To be the best version of yourself. Always. Always. And the divine will send you your perfect match. Toward happiness. Okay ladies. I hope that you understand this message. Never chase a man. Don't write him letters. You know. Uh. Don't think about men that you knew way back when and you want them and so you're going to contact them again. Don't do it. If men are interested in you, they will contact you. But if you jump and contact them, you look desperate and they will treat you all kind of ways. Okay, women, I hope that you understand this message. And I really hope that it helps someone. Now, for those of you who have questions, here it is. Send your questions to MissFaysWorld at Hotmail.com. That's MissFaysWorld at Hotmail.com. And I will answer your questions either through the email or online. Now, keep your letters short. Try to do one page summarize your situation and ask the question. Now, for those of you who would rather me answer your question through the email, put it at the top of the email. And this way it helps to keep things flowing. Okay? And, um, and if I feel that the response to your letter will help the collective, I will read it online uh, as I have done today, unless you specify otherwise. Okay, so I wish you all well. 
I wish you happiness and uh, goodwill. And I hope to see you next time.